In this video, I want to go over a couple of the trickier things that we had in the Excel portion of the midterm exam. One of them was, uh, well, displaying a dollar sign and a K symbol, but displaying just the digits here at the beginning of these sales figures. For instance, 168 in this one, the 80 here, 192, 137, and the 22 and 55, and so forth. Now, it uses functions we've used in the past and in practice, but in just a slightly different way. And let me just kind of remind you by looking at this situation. Here I've got some a more familiar thing that we've done in practice and in homework. We've got names, last name, comma, first name. And let's just remember that we can display the first portion of this text string if we have some kind of common feature. In this case, it's a comma. The common, the comma is common. So I'm going to display characters from the left. Now the number of characters I want to display is going to be based off of finding the comma. Okay, so now I can find all the text through the comma. Now notice it's displaying the comma. Now if I don't want that comma to, to get displayed then I modify my find function by going minus one. That takes me one space to the left of the comma. And if I wanted to go even further for some reason I could put in other numbers, minus three, and I could go three spaces to the left of that comma. Now using a similar technique we can display just the digits in front of the comma here. The challenge is, is the true d number doesn't actually have a comma. You see this? So if we look at the true value, no comma, no dollar sign. It, they've been formatted to look that way. But what common feature do all these numbers have? They all have a period in there. So the period is going to be the critical item to look for. So I'm going to try something similar. Display numbers from the left because that's what we want, 168, 80, 192, those are on the left side. In A2, the number of characters will be based on finding the period within A2. And this is what I have. So, okay, well, that's not so bad. Um, now, in this first one here, I wanted the 168. So notice that's, I want to get rid of the 292 in the period. In the second one here, I want to display the 80. That means I need to get rid of the 780 period, and so forth. So instead of just finding, let me see if I can expand this a bit for us here. Instead of just finding the period, I actually want to go several characters to the left. And since I want to get rid of three characters in a period, that would be a minus four. That leaves me with the number in thousands, 168, 80, 192, and so forth. Now this particular problem wanted us to include a dollar sign and the letter K, you know, so 168 K, 168,000. Well now that we can get just the number, we can use concatenate to join other characters with this number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and take this function, which is getting me the number that I want, and I'm going to copy it. Then I'm going to rewrite this with a concatenate function. Concatenate. I want to bring in a dollar sign, the next parameter that I want to concatenate or join up is going to be the function, comma, and then the third thing that I want to bring in is a letter K. There we go. 168K, 80K, 22K, 189K, and so forth. Now the other one that caused, um, that caused some problems was finding the, uh, the phone prefix. So in this number it's 777, in this one it's 741, and this one it's 272. Now if all the numbers were structured in the same way with area codes, it would be extremely easy work, just displaying from the mid after the space. No big deal. But I um, made it a little bit more challenging by including some phone numbers that don't have the area code and thus don't have a space to search for. So that's problematic. So once again, we're going to look for some consistent feature. Now all these phone numbers do have a hyphen, so that could be a way to go. But the one I want to demonstrate, the, the way I'm going to demonstrate it here, is that we can display all the characters from the right because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, all the phone numbers 
do have at least eight characters, four digits, a hyphen, and then the three digit prefix. So watch this for a second. Equals right C2 comma eight. This gives me the main phone number minus the area code. Now, if I can get the main phone number minus the area code, then the prefix is clearly the first three characters from the left of that result. Knowing it's the first three characters from the left of that result, I could use a left function starting with a right function. I know that sounds really weird, so let me write it this way. I'm going to go ahead and take this entire function here. I'm going to cut it. And instead, I'm going to display numbers from the left. Now, instead of displaying from the left of C2, which contains the original phone number with an area code, I'm going to display numbers from the left of the right function, which I know displays only the main portion of the phone number. How many characters do I want? Three. That leaves me with only the prefix of those numbers.